Corsair's H115i Pro launched alongside the H150i Pro, the first two closed-loop liquid coolers to use the Asetek 6th generation pump. As we said in the H150i Pro review, Asetek didn't do Corsair any favors here. The new pump isn't much different from the old one, and primarily focuses on RGB implementations akin to NZXT's custom work on the XX2 series. Regardless, Corsair has taken this and used it as an opportunity to bundle their new CLCs with silence-focused fans, the ML120 Pro fans. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. This review is pretty basic. It's not too hard to go through or digest, but let's recap a couple of the main differences with the ASTEC 6th generation pump. So the 6th gen pump is one that we tore down previously with the H150i Pro. This one right here, it's a 360 cooler. It should be priced at 150 to 160 USD. This one's 140. Now I say the 360 should be because checking Newegg, there was one third party marketplace seller who listed the H150i Pro for $650. Basically the cost of, well, I would say a graphics card, but we all know how that goes. It's the cost of a 1050 right now. Anyway though, that's supposed to be 150, 160. This is 140. Price turns 10 bucks, not a big difference for 360 versus 280. Now, as far as performance, Corsair basically focused their fans used on these devices, the ML120s, to be more silence driven. They don't spin up that fast. The ML120 Pros, really only go up at 140 millimeters to about 1050, 1100 RPM, somewhere in that range. And that means you're gonna be limited on your cooling performance. But if the focus is silence and not cooling, then we need to focus more on how does it perform for acoustics. As far as the Asetek pump, to get everyone back up to speed, when we did our teardown of this cooler, the primary differences were the actual uh, impeller inside of the pump block. So the impeller is now a metal impeller that more resembles the old Dynatron impellers that were used in Antex 1250 series coolers. It's more similar to those. It's a bit higher quality than the three-pronged plastic impeller that was used in Asetek 4th, 4.5, and 5th gen products, including the previous H115i, not to be confused with the H115i Pro. Both are 280 millimeters, the fans are significantly different, and the pumps are one generation or so apart. Might be two at this point, but the uh, Ace Attack contributions, though, basically di different uh, impeller, and the different impeller is part of an effort to maintain low permeation of the tubes and of the liquid leaving the loop over time. So you have uh, slightly different aging characteristics between the pumps. Sixth gen's not been out long enough to really fully gauge those yet. It should theoretically be better in terms of noise and cooling performance and pump speed, things like that. Asetek hasn't changed a whole lot. Corsair dictated most of the design. The cold plate's a little bit smaller, things like that. But the primary differences really do come down to the impeller's different, and there's built-in RGB integration now with the Asetek stock coolers, which we have footage of the Asetek stock ones before they get branded as well. Let's get into the testing, though. For full testing methodology, as always, click the link in the description below for the full article, which has testing notes. As indicated, this is silence-focused. It's loudest noise output for full system noise with two 140ml pros uh, is only 37-ish dBA, as we'll get to, which means that for noise normalized thermals, which we do at 40 dBA, we run into a bit of a problem, but we'll talk about that in a moment. For standard flat-out thermal testing, the Corsair H115i Pro lands about 50 to 60% of the way down our full chart. The flat-out speeds for the H115i Pro operate right around EVGA CLC 280 at equivalent RPMs in terms of thermal performance. EVGA spins a lot faster, but when we match them to the same RPMs, they're not too different. At 39 degrees above ambient, the H115i Pro is operating at 37 decibels, dBA, something we'll discuss later, and lands just 3 degrees warmer than the 360mm H150i Pro at 40 dBA. Positioned versus the EVGA CLC 280, performance is similar at 1050 RPM, but other factors enter play. EVGA's CLC 280 costs about $140, the same as the H115i Pro, and takes a much different visual approach. EVGA's fans can spin up significantly faster as well, but will hit 57 dBA when maxed, basically unusable at that noise level, unless in very specific use cases. 
Other competitors adjacent to the 115i Pro include the X42 140 cooler at much higher fan speeds of 1700 RPM and, of course, higher noise levels, and the Ice Bear 420 at lower fan speeds and with anemic fans and an anemic pump. Moving on to noise testing, the Corsair H115i Pro again looked at silence. We see that the out-of-the-box acoustics operating at 100% fan speeds land the H115i Pro at 37 dBA for total system noise in this testing. This plants it within margin of error of the X61 at 1050 RPM and CLC280 at 1050 RPM. And the difference between these rankings is that, unlike EVGA and NZXT, Corsair is already at its maximum fan speed. The included fans spin at lower RPM, and Corsair does excellently here for focusing on limiting the noise output and has managed to build a set of fans that operate at a competitive noise and thermal level with other 280mm closed loop coolers when at similar noise levels. On this chart, barring the EK Predator that was manually tuned to the lowest RPM it could sustain, the H115i Pro is technically the quietest 280 cooler. To be fair though, it is within margin of error of others that have been manually tuned down to lower speeds. We didn't have the same highly audible pump whine as we did with the H150i Pro, but each cooler uses an Asetek 6th gen pump. We'd imagine this is more to do with manufacturing tolerances and variants than anything, and our H115i Pro came a bit later, so it might be from a different production batch, maybe retail as opposed to pre-production or something like that. For noise normalization, it doesn't really work here like it normally does. In order to hit 40 dBA on the H115i Pro, we'd have to use louder and faster fans on the cooler. Typically, this is a test of 40 dBA output with stock fans. Corsair operates below that natively, even with full system noise factored in, so we'll keep this in mind for future noise normalization benchmarks and might do an additional lower dBA noise test. Regardless, just for perspective, the H115i Pro at 37 dBA, functionally handicapped versus the others, and a 3 dBA difference, which is therefore entering noticeable territory, lands between the EK Fluid Gaming at 240 and the original H115i unit. Not the Pro, just to be clear here. And then it all comes down to price. The H115i Pro is $140. The H150i Pro should be $150, $160 in that range. Not a big price difference. You do get a bit more flexibility on fan tuning with the 360 rad instead, but it comes down to whether you want to actually do that type of thing and also does it fit in the case in question. EVGA CLC280 is also about $140 these days, and the H115i non-pro is $130 to $140, X52 is $131. They're all about the same in terms of price. It's a $10, maybe $20 variance. For all these coolers, in terms of cooling performance, if you're willing to change the fan speeds, the thermal performance can be made about equal. The out-of-the-box acoustics, as opposed to the out-of-the-box thermals, is the bigger question here. If you're not willing to do any fan speed uh, tuning or any custom fan curves and you just run it flat out, the H115i Pro will start you at a much lower noise level and still perform completely adequately for basically any CPU under reasonable conditions, i.e. not the hashtag rip LTT CPU benchmark we recently ran because that was a lot of wattage. But up until crazy points like that, it's pretty good. It will perform slightly behind in terms of thermals when matched against things that are louder or allowed to operate louder, like the EVGA CLC280 at max fan RPM. But at max fan RPM, that cooler is about 57 dBA in our testing, so you enter territory where it's kind of unusable for a lot of people. It'll come down then to how you feel about the noise and how you feel about doing work on tuning fan curves. This doesn't really leave you much room to do much tweaking because it's already more or less operating at its optimal level in terms of noise to performance. So you don't have a lot of room to play there. You can lower the RPMs if you want it even quieter, but there's no room to go up. And that, I think, pretty much wraps up the cooler. Overall, the H150i Pro, I think, somewhat disappointed us. It was not an intensely large improvement over previous coolers that Corsair has made, the main differences are things that we can't see. I think that's kind of why it's easy to be disappointed by the new Pro series of coolers that use 6th gen pumps, because if most of the improvements are things like improving reliability on Ace Attack's end and decreasing permeation, slowing down the rate of permeation, improving the pump in a way that air pockets or uh, hot spots in the tubing don't form as much or hot spots in the pump housing don't form and cause plastic to deform over time, stuff like that. That's basically most of the improvements as Asetek 
has informed me in the past. So if those are most of the improvements, that's stuff you can't really see. And uh, in terms of warranty, they're not all that different. I think it might be a difference of a year or something at most. But either way, uh, primarily invisible improvements doesn't mean they're not there. It just means that it might not be something you'd ever notice because it's something you'd have to have old and new simultaneously in function and also lots of them to eliminate variants. But um, that's, I mean, that's it. If you're looking at buying an H115i, we still like that cooler a lot. You can get it $10 cheaper, the fans run faster, and therefore it can cool better. However, it uses the old generation pump, which may be completely irrelevant, we need time to tell, and it uses faster fans, so you have to do a bit of tuning. And that's, that's really all there is to it. It comes down to how you feel about the noise. So that's it for this one. As always, Patreon link in the description below. Go to patreon.com slash gamers and access helps out directly. Make sure you subscribe to get additional reviews. We have some other CLCs coming up and other thermal testing that you all will be interested in. And go to store.gamersnexus.net to make sure you buy one of our mod mats that are now going to be, I think, in stock within a couple days of this video going live, if not in stock at that time. So pick one up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.